Hello, in this video I'm just going to go over some of the basics in Excel, how we can enter values and formulas, how we can create a table of values, uh, how we can copy a pattern and formula, uh, how we can create a graph and label it, and then we'll look at how you can insert a text box uh, which you can use for entering values. Uh, just some of the very basics of Excel, it's just a, a giant table, everything is organized by rows and columns, uh, so say so I click on this cell here, uh, this is column D, so it's told up here, column D, row 13. So that tells you the location, column D, row 13, and you just refer to it as D13. Uh, Excel, a spreadsheet is also made up of multiple sheets. Uh, so if you look down at the bottom, there's three tabs. You have sheet 1, sheet 2, and sheet 3. You can add more, delete them, rename them, do whatever you want. And then up at the top is the ribbon. Uh, which is where you can do all your formatting, change fonts, color things. Uh, you can also insert uh, graphs and, and other uh, text boxes and other things too. Uh, so let's look at an example. Let's go down, uh, go down here to sh uh, tab for sheet two and click on that. Uh, in this example, we have a bungee jumper who jumps off the Missouri River Bridge. His height in feet above the water level is modeled by the function h of t equals 20.5 t squared minus 123t plus 190.5 and this is for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 6 where t is time measured in seconds. There's three things we'll do here. One is we will create a table of values uh, for this function from 0 to 6 seconds and we'll use half second increments. Then we will create a graph of our function and we'll look at how you label it, and then lastly we'll go back and uh, try and compute the average rate of change uh, for the values in the table. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is create the table, and we do that, uh, we'll go ahead and put in our headings, so we have T and H. So I can just, you can uh, select any cell you want, type in T or H or whatever letters, whatever text you want, and it'll go into the cell, just press enter when you're done. You can also use the arrow keys and the mouse to move around. To create the values for time, we need to start at 0 and increment by 0.5. And if you look, I, I only have to enter in the first two values, uh, the 0 and the 0 0.5, because I'm starting to create a pattern. And that pattern will go 0, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and so forth. Uh, Excel can figure that out for me if I just copy it down. So I'm going to select both of those values. So this is cell A11 and, a, or sorry, cell A12 and A13. Uh, select both of those. And if you look in the bottom right corner of that little selection box, you'll see that dot. Click on the dot and drag down. And you'll see that it starts to copy the pattern down. So we can copy a pattern uh, very easily in Excel which is helpful for building tables. Next we need to type in the formula, so let's go under column H, or this is my heading for column H, this is actually in cell B12, and uh, I need to type our formula, and I'll run through this real quick and just explain how I did everything. So my formula will look like equals 20.5 times A12 raised to the second power minus 123 times A12 plus 190.5. Now if you look at that, the, the first thing to observe is that I started the equation with an equal sign. Anytime you do a formula, it has to start with an equal sign. Uh, next, anytime there's multiplication or an operation, you have to include it. Excel will not assume multiplication, so just putting parentheses next to each other doesn't work. Uh, and lastly, uh, Excel doesn't recognize variables. It uses cell references. So my variable is call is all my T values. So uh, under my T heading here in column A. So the very first one is in cell A12. That's what that formula will use. If you press enter, it'll show you 190.5. To copy this down, we can do it the same way we did the pattern, but we only need one cell this time. So highlight cell uh, B12 grab the bottom right corner, click and drag down, and we should get a table of values. Okay, so we've now created a table of values from 0 to 6 seconds in half-second increments that represents the height of our bungee jumper. 
Uh, let's now go ahead and create a graph. And the first thing to create a graph is you need to highlight all of your table and go ahead and include the headings, the T and the H. To insert the graph, go to the Insert tab in your ribbon and do not do the line graph, go to Scatter. And we're going to use the very first one, so it's just going to be a, a points. So we get our graph. You can move the graph. You can format the graph if you right-click. There's the option of format area. There's other formatting options up here uh, under chart tools. Uh, format to your heart's content. Uh, the main thing I want to look at is how do we update the title and, and put some axis tiles in here. If you look, it's already put this H as the chart title. That just came from whatever was typed into B11. I want to be a little bit more specific here. So I'm just going to click on that and type in this is the height of our bungee jumper. Uh, I want to also go ahead and add in uh, horizontal and vertical or X and Y axis labels. So if with the graph selected, uh, go up to the ribbon and you have this additional part for chart tools and we want the layout tab. Go to axis titles and you'll see underneath you have the primary horizontal axis and the primary vertical and we're going to do one of each of those. So the title below the axis for horizontal and then we'll go back and we'll do vertical and I'll just do rotated title. Uh, it's just usually the easiest, uh, most efficient one. Once you create them it'll just put a default text in there so you need to go in and edit that. Uh, so the vertical axis is the height in uh, feet and the horizontal axis is the time in seconds. And so there's a labeled graph for our uh, for our function. The last thing that I want to do is look at uh, just trying to create average rate of change uh, for each of the values in our table. Uh, to do that we need to remember what average rate of change is. I'll go ahead and put in my heading in uh, cell C11. Uh, average rate of change, the formula we use is just slope, so y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh, so we'll type the formula in, but we're going to use cell references instead of the x and y's. Uh, so the first thing is equals, open parentheses, for y2, that's the second y value, so that's the second height value. Uh, the cell reference for that is b13, minus the first one, which is cell b12 close parentheses, divide by, open parentheses, do the same thing with the, the values in column A. So A13 minus A12, and then close the parentheses. So you should have equals open parentheses B13 minus B12, close parentheses, divide by, or slash, uh, open parentheses A13 minus A12, and close parentheses. When you're done, hit enter and you should get a negative 112.75. Uh, if you want to copy this down and compute it for all of them, go ahead and click on that cell. Uh, click on the little corner and drag it down. Stop one short though, because uh, you don't actually compute the average rate of change in the very bottom one. Uh, so there, hopefully you have an idea of how to create a table of values using Excel, how to create a graph, and copy formulas and patterns down. And the last thing that we need to do is add in a text box, uh, which we can get that if you go to the Insert tab again, and go over here to the right. There's the button for text box. Just click on that. Uh, go back to your a spreadsheet and just click and drag and make a rectangle, and that will create a text box. Now the nice thing about text boxes is it's, a, it's an easy place where you can go in and type your answers. Uh, you can always uh, resize the text box, you can move it, you can change the format if you want to change the color, uh, or, or maybe um, bold or underline, you can change font. It's basically like having a small Word document uh, within your spreadsheet.